Welcome back, Save, Invest, Repeat. This is Mike Sneed coming to you again with this series on turning $40 into $300 uh, flipping appliances. Today, we're going to talk about exactly what type of appliance you should be buying. Starting off, you're going to be flipping appliances. I suggest that you buy washers and dryers. Uh, for one, they are easier to store and they're easier to sell. Washers and dryers are away um, in people's houses. They usually tuck away where nobody can see them. So there, people don't really care so much if they're actually matching sets. So there, you can actually just sell the washer or you can sell just the dryer. And they're not really caring so much about the cosmetic of it as if they would a refrigerator, a range, a dishwasher, or either a microwave. Uh, because those things going to be out in the kitchen or out on display for people to see. And with those items, they want everything to match. So they will want, uh, they will want, if a lot of people, if they got a Kenmore refrigerator, they want a Kenmore range and they want the same, uh, they want it to actually match the stainless steel and, and the color black and all the color white. And they're going to be more picky about the cosmetic of it. With the um, washers and dryers, they don't really care, like I say, because they're not out in the public for people to see. And if they got a Whirlpool dryer and a, and a, and a Maytag washer, they're not going to care that much about that. So what I suggest you do is actually buy washers and dryers. And the type of washer and dryer you want to buy, you want to buy the ones that have the manual timers. Um, you don't want to get into the ones that are going to have computerized stuff. The computerized stuff, if, you, if you're selling them as a resale, uh, you, you're usually going to give a warranty on them, maybe 60 days, maybe 90 days. If you give a warranty on them and that computer goes out, that computer board can cost you three to $400 by itself. You don't want that. You want, a you want something that has a manual timer. So if the timer goes out, if the actual uh, pressure switch goes out, you can just replace those individual items and they're going to be cheaper to, um, cheaper to repair. And most of the time, you can go back to the actual scrap yard or where you bought them at last time. You can usually find something that match up to, that you can pull a part off of what we call a donor machine, where you can actually pull the parts off of that machine, actually put it on, uh, put it on there without having to go out and buy the actual computer board. If you buy a com one that's computerized, most of the time, you got to get that exact series to actually put it on there and trying to find the exact series that the one you took it off and to make a model can be tricky or else you want to go buy a brand new. Also, what's going to happen with these appliances, sometimes, uh, depending on who you sell them to, a lot of times they're going to go into low-income housings and they might have, some of them, got to be honest, might have a bug infestation. Uh, bugs get, like to get up behind the computer boards and they get behind the computer boards, they actually short them out. And when they short them out, even though it's 90 days, you can put in there, uh, you, uh, you, if a bug infestation, you don't you don't want it. But you go into somebody's house and you tell them they got roaches, they're gonna say I don't have roaches. You know, uh, unless you see them running everywhere, they might tell you I don't have roaches. It was in it when you brought it brought it there. And you're gonna be responsible for replacing a, a control board or replacing that washer and dryer. Okay. Now, what type of washer and dryer do I suggest starting off? Um, I like getting Whirlpool um, appliances, uh, especially uh, the direct drive wash machine and this wash machine is going to be the one that has the agitator uh, in it and the agitator right here um, is the tall agitator and it actually fills all the way up with water and the way you can tell it's the actual direct drive I'm going to come around to the back if you look right here on the side you'll see this this little plastic piece right here and you see it goes all the way down that lets you know that the whole front can will come off and that's an easy way to tell it's a direct drive. Just by looking right here on the side. And it's going to be the Whirlpool, uh, Kenmore, Roper. This series right here. Direct drive series. This right here is the actual, what we call the uh, money maker, the workhorse uh, washer right here. This washer right here uh, is, is, is proven. It, it works. Uh, it, it's, it costs a little money to repair it. And once you get this thing restored, uh, it can last 15, 20 years easy uh, with, with no problems. And this right, and the parts on there are super cheap. You can get them aftermarket parts. Everybody have them. You can find them very readily uh, at the, uh, at the, at the uh, as I said, at the retainer sites. You can find them online pretty easy uh, when you start looking at Craigslist and Facebook. A lot of people are actually taking these out. They don't know. But this right here is the actual one you want. 
This one right here, like I say, once you get it restored, it'll last you 15, 20 years pretty easy once it, once it's restored. So you uh, And it's real cheap to fix. And this right here, you can actually sell it. You can sell this right here, this washer right here, to a low-end customer. And you can also sell it to a high-end customer. Just by changing the word on your actual sales ad, you can sell it to a low-end or either high-end. Either way, you can you can you can sell this, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in the later videos. With the dryer, uh, the dryer I like the Whirlpool, um, and I like the ones that has the dryer lint screen at the top because of this right here. A lot of the customers and stuff, the people who have them, they don't actually clean the lint screen like they should. And what happened because the lint screen is here at the top, it's away from the actual motor, uh, and that way it makes the motor last longer. The ones that have the lint screen right here when you open the door at the front, all that lint and moisture and stuff is getting pulled right by the motor. And it causes the motor to um, not to last as long I've seen uh, throughout the years. And most of the time, uh, people who got rental property and stuff, they're going to be looking for the ones that got the lint screen at the top because they know that too. It's not going to give them as much problems because they put this in their rental property. They know that the renters are not going to change the lint screen like they should. And, it, and this right here could actually make it last longer because it's away from the motor. So these are the appliances that I suggest that you buy. You want to buy the Whirlpool Direct Drive washing machines. And you want to buy the uh, Whirlpool dryers if you can. Dryers are not that, uh, it's not that, it's, they're not that much can go wrong with them. And they're pretty easy and cheap to fix. So if you can't get the Whirlpool dryers starting off, uh, it won't matter too much. Uh, a dryer, uh, the technology on the dryer hasn't changed too much. Just make sure you stay away from the things that are electronics. On the washing machines, stay away from the front loaders. Stay away from the front loaders. I don't care how good they look. <laughs> And all that, stay away from them and trying to sell as resale. Because what's going to happen, in order for you to fix them and, and, and the parts and stuff you got put in them, you're going to run into what you call price compression. In order to uh, fix a, a front load washing machine and get it out there, um, it's going to cost you um, about the price of what a new washing machine would cost. So you're going to be bumping up against the price of a new washing machine. So what happens then, you're going to actually uh, eliminate the low-income people. The low-income people are not going to be able to pay you $300 uh, for a front-load washing machine. Um, they can pay you $100 for this washing machine right here or $150, but they ain't going to be able to pay you $300. They got $300, they'll go and go buy a brand new one. And then when you go into the front-load washing machines, if um, you go to the high-end customer, they're not going to they're not going to pay you $300 for a uh, a front a used front uh front load washing machine. What they're going to do, they just go out and buy a brand new one cuz they uh if they're going to buy something uh, a new appliance uh front loader with the new technology, they just go buy a brand new one. They ain't going to go buy a used one. So I stay away from the front loaders. That's with the washers and with the dryers. Stay away from the front loaders. With the dryers, you want to stay with the old timers like this. Um, stay away from anything that got a computer in them. You want to stay away from the ones with the computer in them. I like the ones that get the ones that's white. White is easily to, uh, easily to match. Uh, stay away from all those crazy colors like you see right here with the burgundies and stuff. That color is too too hard to match. This white right here is easy to match, easy to paint. And once we get done with it, it's going to look brand new. So the next episode coming up, I'm going to show you how to actually restore the appliance and get them ready to be sold. Thank you again for tuning in. If you got any questions, concerns, just give me an uh, email at Save Invest Repeat. Thanks.